If you want to get to a space of oneness, you're going to have to look at your shadow, embrace things that make you uncomfortable, and peer into the darkness. That's part of it. With that in mind, my topic today is vulture lore. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Laura Giles for Pan Society, and this is my view every day on the way to work. Vultures. Most people find vultures rather repulsive. They eat dead things and smell bad. Who wants to be near that? Well, today I'm going to challenge you to change your perspective. Everything in nature is sacred. Everything has a purpose and a place. When you open yourself up to see the beauty that exists in everything, it creates compassion, non-judgment, and connection within you. So let's take a look at what old vulture has to offer. First off, the vulture actually isn't repulsive in other cultures or in other times. Many cultures saw the bird as being associated with death, and that's actually a good thing because the spirit world is seen as either being a positive thing or our natural state. There are two ancient Egyptian goddesses who have vulture associations. Nekbet, the goddess of childbirth and feminine energies, is depicted as a white vulture because vultures are very good mothers. They're very protective and nurturing of their young. They're friendly. When they find a kill, they call to other vultures to share the bounty. Vultures from up to 30 miles away come to share in it and then return home as they live in communities. They also mate for life and are seen as very loving and loyal. Mat is the Egyptian goddess who is often seen at the top of temples and we saw her a lot on my recent tour to Egypt. She represents law, order, and truth and is depicted with the wings of a vulture. Mat is a protector of earth and her eye sees all. When someone dies, their heart is measured against Mat's vulture feather of truth. If the person led a righteous life, it would balance. If not, it would be heavier than the feather and they'd die the eternal death. Ancient Zoroastrians, Tibetan Buddhists, and Iranians put their dead on a raised platform and offered them up to the vultures to eat because they believe that vultures release the soul from the body so that it can go home. Many cultures view this as the power of transformation and this is why vultures are seen as being symbols of death and rebirth. Ancient Etruscans and Romans considered vultures the messengers of the gods. And if you look at vultures practically, the ecosystem depends on them to clean up carrion. They eat dead things so that they aren't polluting the environment. Their digestive systems are designed to digest bacteria and kill other animals that kill other animals and neutralize it so it doesn't continue to infect and plague wildlife. That's a good thing, don't you think? So if you think about it, you can see why they're so highly prized by other cultures. I know they do vile things like poop on their feet to stay cool and pee on themselves to kill bacteria and parasites. You have to see the big picture and the functionality of what they do. They're servants. They do the dirty work that needs to be done. In this way, they're a huge asset to people. So the next time you look down on someone for not being beautiful or smelling so great, remember the vulture. Perhaps that person serves in a similar way. If you're lucky enough to have a vulture as a spirit animal, he could signal that it's time for purification and rebirth. If this is your birth animal that stays with you for life, you could have the ability to stay balanced, or it could mean that you still need to learn this and he's here to teach you. He could also bring the gifts of clear seeing, resourcefulness, ability to speak with the other world, shamanic skills, fidelity, good mothering, purification, or any of the other qualities of the vulture. As with any spirit animal, there are things that the animals have in common, but each one has its own personality, so you have to develop a relationship with your spirit animal to know exactly what gifts he brings you and how to tap into it. Anyway, I definitely encourage you to look at the natural world Get out in it. Be a part of it. Learn about it. We fear what we don't know. When we become friends with things, we create intimacy so that you have connection, so that you can have oneness. So next time you see a vulture, say thank you. Or you can just do that right now. Send love to the vultures. They're most definitely our friends in the skies. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.